A perpetual, a perpetual motion, motion machine is a hypothetical, hypothetical machine that can, that can do work, work infinitely, infinitely without an energy, energy source. source. This kind of this machine kind of is impossible as it would violate the first or second law of thermodynamics. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Instead, it simply changes from one form to another. My name is Curiosity Dude, and for this video, I'm going to be telling you about my journey on how I might have figured out perpetual motion. Hello Curiositors! When I was in high school, and even a little bit after high school, I was obsessed with power. But not the kind of power you're thinking about, the kind of power I'm talking about is electricity or energy. For some reason I took an interest in it, and the more I learned about it, the more I became intrigued. I learned about all the possibilities when it comes to things it could power, how it could manipulate things, and all the ways we could contain and generate it. Then one day I stumbled upon the phrase, PERPETUAL MOTION. I don't remember where I heard it from, at the time I didn't know what that was, so I googled it. The definition of perpetual motion is a state in which movement or action is or appears to be continuous and unceasing. For example, the planet is in perpetual motion. There's also a second definition, which is the motion of a hypothetical machine which once activated would run forever unless subject to an external force or to wear. For those of you who don't know, what the word wear means, in this context, it just means to get old or to deteriorate. I mention this because I didn't know what that word wear meant in this context. Anyway, after I read this, I was very intrigued about perpetual motion. And right underneath the definition where it says, people who ask, there was a question that said, why is perpetual motion impossible? Now mind you, I just learned what perpetual motion was, and then I saw a question that implies that it's impossible, so I clicked on it. And the answer to that question was, it means that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Instead, it simply changes from one form to another. To keep a machine moving, the energy applied should stay with the machine without any losses. Because of this fact alone, it is impossible to build perpetual motion machines. Now, when I read this, I didn't understand it. But after a year or two, I did, because I was learning about physics on my free time by watching YouTube videos. And I started taking a robotics engineering class my senior year of high school. And after graduation, I went to a trade school to become an electrician, where I learned more about physics and electricity. Over those years, I was always thinking about perpetual motion and wondering if it was possible. And I would watch so many videos about why it was impossible and about people who say they made a perpetual motion machine and they would show it working on camera. And then I would watch videos about people debunking those videos and saying that they're not real, it's just, it's fake. There's a battery somewhere hidden or whatever. So I was convinced that it wasn't possible to make a perpetual motion machine. But then one day, I saw a video about nature and the weather. And I learned that the water cycle is a natural, real-life example of perpetual motion. I also learned that most life cycles in nature are in a perpetual motion state. If they weren't, life would just cease to exist. After I realized this, I had hoped that it was possible to make a perpetual motion machine. So I just decided that I was going to figure this out, and I was motivated to make my own perpetual motion machine. What pushed me to do this was the fact that people say it's impossible because physics says so. But physics also says that bees shouldn't be able to fly because their wings are too small for their bodies, but they fly anyway. I learned that the laws of physics aren't set in stone. They are just theories that seem to be true and apply to most things, so everyone just accepts them without question. On YouTube, I saw a video where a man got a battery and connected it to a DC motor. DC just stands for direct current. In the video, the man then connected the motor to a rotor on an electric DC generator and then connected the current generated from that generator into the same battery, and BOOM! He made a perpetual motion machine. And it looked like it worked, but I learned that eventually it would run low on power and stop working. Because of this stupid thing called physical and electrical resistance. Basically what that means is when a current or electricity travels through something, the current slows down. Voltage, or volts for short, is a unit of measurement that measures how fast a current or electricity is going. Amperage, or amps, is a unit of measurement that measures how much current or electricity there is. Everything that needs power to work needs a specific amount of current, or volts and amps, to work. If you have too much voltage and amperage, you could fry whatever it is you're trying to power. And if it's too low, it just won't work, or it won't work properly. And to regulate current going into electrical devices, people use these things called resistors. So in the video I saw where the guy claimed he made a perpetual motion machine, 
the reason why it wasn't a perpetual motion machine is because eventually it'll stop. The reason it would stop is because energy powering it would escape through the physical resistance from the generator and heat through the resistors. And if you remember, they're not supposed to stop unless it breaks or someone or something stops it. So after thinking about this for a long time, I realized that the only way I could make an actual perpetual motion machine is if I could make a generator that didn't have physical resistance, or at least a low amount of physical resistance, so it could be efficient. And the perpetual motion machine would also have to generate enough energy to make up for the constant energy leaving the circuit from the resistors generating heat. So once I had these guidelines on what I needed to make, it was time to brainstorm and do a lot of research on how to make this. Like, what materials do I use? How do I configure a perpetual motion circuit? It took me a long time, like probably four years. I designed a lot of failed circuit schematics, but then I started thinking about how the human body works and how we stay alive. I started thinking about the human brain and the heart and the lungs. They just keep going and they don't stop until we die. Then I started thinking about human life, how the mother's body has to transfer energy and nutrients to the zygote. Then it turns into an embryo and so on. And after doing research on the human body and how babies are developed, I realized that technically perpetual motion does not exist based off the definition. But there is a potential perpetual cycle that could mimic perpetual motion. You know that saying, you need money to make money? Well, we need energy to generate energy. Eventually, I came up with this circuit schematic. It's not a very detailed schematic. It kind of looks confusing, so I'm just going to explain how this perpetual flow of energy device is supposed to work. All of the lime squares represent DC motors. The purple rectangles represent Arduinos, or any type of programmable chip that can control a motor. The red squares represent supercapacitors, or power cells. The magenta, oval, circle, and triangle are generators. The oval represents a vibration power generator, the circle represents a normal basic DC generator, and the triangle represents a thermoelectric generator. The blue lines represent wires, and the white lines represent a metal structure. So in order for this to work, these two supercapacitors need to be charged first so it can start. We can call them supercapacitor number two and number three. Once supercapacitor number two connects to Arduino number one, it will be pre-programmed to tell motor number one to turn on in five seconds. As soon as it activates, it will turn the rotor in the DC generator. The DC generator will then generate power that will charge supercapacitor number four and also number one. The DC generator will not be able to fully charge supercapacitor number one before supercapacitor number two runs out of energy. Because of this, it will need a vibration power generator to help fully charge supercapacitor number one. For those of you who don't know, motors and generators produce sound when they are working, and sound is just vibrations in the air. So the vibrations from the motors and the DC generator will power the vibration generator. Now I am not sure if the DC generator and the vibration generator will be enough to fully charge supercapacitor number one, so because of this, it will need a thermoelectric generator to help fully charge supercapacitor number one. For those of you who don't know, everything that electricity passes through generates heat. So the generators, capacitors, motors, wires, resistors, the Arduinos, everything in the circuit will be producing heat. So the entire circuit will be powering the thermoelectric generator, and that generator will be contributing to the charging of supercapacitor number one and number four. Eventually, supercapacitor number two will run low on energy and Arduino number one will stop working and everything will just stop. But before everything comes to a complete stop, Arduino number two will activate and it'll be powered by supercapacitor number three. Arduino number two will tell motor number two to rotate the metal frame 180 degrees so that supercapacitor number one will switch with supercapacitor number two and then everything will operate as normal. And it will continue to do this a few times, but eventually supercapacitor number three will run low on energy. When that happens, Arduino number one will tell motor number three to rotate the metal frame 180 degrees so that supercapacitor number four will switch with supercapacitor number three, and the cycle will go on until subject to an external force or to wear. Now, technically, this is not a perpetual motion machine, I know. But what this is, is energy perpetually changing form in a circuit. It goes from electricity to heat and vibrations, then back to electricity again. 
For those of you who actually know stuff about circuits and generators and whatnot, you'll know that I actually left out a lot of details. And I did that on purpose because I didn't want to make this video longer than it already is. Even if this was tested and turns out it doesn't work, at least you guys learned stuff about this topic. That's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the merch. Link in the description. And until next time, stay curious. Mm -hmm.